Amis téléspectateurs, bonsoir. Ici avec vous Jean-Aubert Philippot pour animer ce segment de On d'hier. Et Julien Jodia, eh bien, nous avons un grand invité avec nous et nous parlons de faire ce segment, ça, bien entendu, en anglais. Et nous avons avec nous aujourd'hui un honneur de Monsignor Casali, qui est le président de St. Thomas University. Uh, university, a school of higher education here in South Florida. Monsignor, welcome to Island TV. Thank you, Bobby. I'm very happy to be here with you. As you all know, uh, St. Thomas is a great school, and uh, he's here today because we want to talk about education. Um, first of all, just let us know a little bit about, um, you know, what is St. Thomas University and how you're helping uh, the young minds in the community. Well, St. Thomas University is going to be celebrating its 50th year here in Miami in uh, 2011. Um, it was uh, founded by the Augustinian father, fathers who were exiled from uh, Cuba uh, right after the Bay of Pigs in 1961, and they came here and they formed what in those days was called Biscayne College. Uh, we retook our name in the 80s uh, and became a university. Um, the name of the university in, in uh, Havana was uh, St. Thomas University, known as Villanova. Uh, we offer uh, many, many different degrees, uh, a full uh, menu of uh, bachelor's degrees, uh, uh, many master's degrees uh, with specializations, uh, a PhD in theology, a doctor in education with many specializations, and we have a wonderful law school uh, that just celebrated its 25th anniversary with lawyers uh, all over our community who are practicing as a result of their education at St. Thomas University. And we continue to grow. We've been doing a lot of building. We have excellent enrollment, and uh, we're very proud of what we're doing. We've been heavily involved in Haiti uh, from the time that I got involved with Haiti Tech um, a number of years ago now. Uh, through uh, our association with uh, Notre Dame de Haiti, and we trained some of the faculty from there. Uh, a few years ago, we established up in the port, Diocese of port au Pay, which is the sister diocese to the Archdiocese of Miami. We established a number of uh, business enterprises, a cooperative for coffee, a solar energy project uh, that supports a bakery, and also an artisan project. So I myself am involved in Fancosé uh, USA uh, as a board member. So we've been heavily involved in, in Haiti for years, and it's, it's been one of our joys and one of our successes. I, it's, it's funny you ask because uh, you talk about that because what I wanted to do also is the relationship about, um, you know, you as an expert in higher ed education and what St. Thomas represents and to know that really uh, such, uh, maybe such, a, such an university, such an institution uh, does not really uh, exist right now in Haiti because, you know, we have, um, we've, most of the universities are state funded and there's ha there has been a lot of problems, you know, in recent years, and there's also a, a lack of uh, technical uh, know-how. There's a lot of there's a lack of other other um, institution of higher learning, and you your participation or your knowledge uh, along with that of other uh, philanthropists really was the idea that drove the creation of Haiti Tech. So I wanted to make the, 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 the analogy between what actually we have here and what Haiti Tech has, has, has aspired and has actually become in terms of the void that it is filling in Haiti. So tell us really about the concept, uh, because I know it is a joint partnership between, you know, dedicated Haitian businessmen and other philanthropists in the U.S. who have actually helped to, to nurture this, this, this unique uh, concept for Haiti Tech. I, explain how this project came about. Well, it came about as, uh, as a kind of inspiration uh, by Dave Lawrence, who at the time was the, the publisher of the Miami Herald. Uh, he had a thought that there was something uh, that could be done by the uh, South Florida community that would help nation building in Haiti. And uh, immediately comes to mind whenever you think about building anything and building any nation that you would have to do something about education. So he invited me, and he, uh, uh, we also had uh, a, 
a partnership with American Airlines through Peter Delara, who was the head of the entire operation in, in, uh, in South Florida and, and the Caribbean. Uh, we, uh, the three of us together, went to Haiti a few times. Uh, and uh, it was actually at the American Embassy with then, in his first term, President Preval uh, and uh, the Minister of Tourism, Maurice Panet. Uh, at a meeting uh, in Haiti, we decided that it really wasn't higher education that was the immediate need. Uh, because as you say, there were state institutions. Notre Dame de Haiti had uh, already been in existence. Um, but a more immediate need was to train technicians, to train technical people that could uh, service the business sector, uh, which was sorely lacking in people who were skilled to do refrigeration, construction, electrical work, uh, automotive repair, uh, the kinds of technical skills that we kind of take for granted in the United States. In fact, the situation was such that a number of, of the uh, business were, businesses were importing p uh, people, skilled, skilled technicians, from other countries. And so the thought was, let's build a school that will provide help on the ground for Haiti to develop its private sector and at the same time provide skill to people who were previously untrained. And Haiti Tech began as a result of that. And uh, the, the reason that I'm also um, so aware of all this and wanted to share it with our audience today uh, is because uh, actually during that trip, Island TV was, uh, was part of the delegation who went, uh, which went for the inauguration. And it happened, it so happened that also the day of that inauguration happened to be September 11, uh, 2001. And everybody knows actually in what frame of mind we all were when that happened. Uh, but yet, um, you know, because there was something to be done, uh, there was a goal to be achieved, and uh, everybody was there. And actually, I think that gave us a little more, uh, um, you know, uh, dedication to really, um, you know, focus on what the purpose of this was. And we have, uh, you mentioned about Mr. Lawrence, we actually have a soundbite from Mr. Dave Lawrence when he was addressing really uh, the, the audience, the crowd, doing that uh, day uh, as he was explaining the need, as you did as well, of this institution which was going to fill a void in Haiti. Let's listen. I think what we are trying to do is in the spirit of partnership and peace. It is in the spirit of respecting other people. It is not by coincidence that the board of Haiti Tech will have more Haitians than it does Americans. This is not about the United States or people of the United States giving something. It's about people working in partnership with one another in behalf of an important people and an important country. The vision for this began about four years ago. It began with a discussion at the home of the American ambassador at which there were a great many Haitians and a few Americans there as well. Without deciding ourselves, the leadership of Haiti, what was most needed. And the business community said to us very, very clearly, what we need the most are more people with great skills We've got great people and smart people, but we need more people with the skills to build a nation, to build a community and a nation. So in fact, what happened is that the people of Haiti decided what this school would be all about. And so the Monsignor, people from American Airlines, worked very, very hard to raise a bunch of money and the people of Haiti worked very hard to raise a bunch of money. And we could offer, I hope beyond money, we could offer some expertise. Vocational education is a real strength of the United States of America. So people like Deborah Allen and John Maricola and Daryl Berteau and others came here, came here to learn and came here to share their 
What a familiar face, uh, Dave Lawrence, who is now the head of the Children's Trust here in South Florida and continuing to do great work for the community. Now, that was back in 2001 when the school was opening. And um, when we come back, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to actually show you uh, the graduation of the first class that uh, actually uh, came um, from the Haiti Tech concept. And we'll continue to speak with Monsignor Casali August this time on, on the air. We'll be right back.